welcome to GoggleCam, the internet's first first-person video of how to do lab. Our sample is in place, our cantilever is aligned, we're ready to collect data. Let's first look at the surface of our sample and see if we're looking at anything interesting with the sample surface. So now we're going to focus our optical boom camera away from the cantilever to the surface. And you can see I'm going up, so I want to go down instead because the cantilever is above the surface. Okay, so here's the surface. And I can tell that because of those black spots. There's sample stuck on the surface or dust or debris or something. Anyway, I can see the surface because of the debris on the surface. The surface is glass, otherwise you wouldn't see it. And indeed, if I keep focusing down, I can see right through the glass to the glue on the steel. And that's probably a scratch in the steel surface. And if I keep going, I get this weird ghost image, a reflection or shadow of the cantilever. So you have to be careful when you're doing this uh, alignment procedure that you're looking at the actual cantilever and not its ghost or shadow. Okay, let's focus back up onto the surface. And what I want to do is move the cantilever close to the surface so that I can then engage the surface without crashing into the surface. So this is like an old stylus, old style record stylus. We're going to bring the stylus gently to the record groove because we don't want to scratch the record. We don't want to damage the stylus. So that is uh, an old metaphor, but uh, what we call, in the, with the microscope, we call that engaging the surface. Before we engage the surface, we want to tune the cantilever. We're working in tapping mode, which means that the cantilever is going to be vibrating. And just like any vibrating object, it has a resonant frequency. So we want to find what is the resonant frequency of this cantilever so that uh, if we drive the vibration to that resonant frequency, it will have the optimal sensitivity. And we call it tuning, and you can see it's like a tuning fork, which is kind of what we're doing. We're adding some energy to the cantilever and seeing how it vibrates naturally. We're going to go ahead and do an auto-tune. Let's do a full range and see what we get. Okay, so the instrument is finding the maximum, the resonant frequency maximum and zooming in on that also auto-adjusting the gains. Okay, so this is the frequency here. This red curve is the actual signal, so this is the maximum resonance. This blue curve is the derivative. And we see here that the instrument has decided, the computer has decided, that this is the frequency we want to operate at. You can see it's not quite at the maximum, and that's so we don't fall off this peak. If, if something shifts, which it will shift, as soon as we get to the surface, the resonant frequency will shift. So we want to be not on the maximum because if that shifts then we're going to fall off and we will lose sensitivity. So if we stay here, if there's some shift, we're going to still be in this region of sensitivity. So the computer decided that and sent all this data here. Use the motors to get close to the surface. This motor control it uh, is a digital process. So every time I click this button, it moves, the motors move a set amount. So I don't press and hold. If you press and hold, it will, the computer will register a whole bunch of moves and the motors will just keep moving until it crashes into the surface. So only click, do clicks. And we're very close to the surface, so I'm going to switch to slow speed. So it'll do a smaller motion when I click. And you can see this cantilever shadow is starting to get a little bit, actually it's the actual cantilever, it's starting to get into focus because it's getting near this focal plane which is the surface. 
and I'm going to stop. That's about as close as I want to get manually. You can see it's starting to get in focus. Now I'm going to put the cover back on. Status withdrawn. Okay, I'm going to put the cover on. Cover keeps dust out and air vibrations like me talking loudly like I'm doing right now so you can hear me to auto engage. So this is the engage dialog and you see it quickly zoomed to the surface and now what it's doing it's hard to see in this view but here you can see the Z position is changing this is the position of the scanner crystal going up and down raising and lowering the sample getting it close to that cantilever and what it's looking for is when it reaches this set point, this voltage, which has to do with the amplitude of the vibration of the cantilever, when it starts tapping the surface, that will dampen that amplitude to reach a certain set point. Every time it does this cycle, it also then the motors move it a little bit closer each time until we reach the set point. Okay, so here's the feedback signal, about three volts, which is our set point. So. That's how it knows it's the right place. Now we have our scan control window. For this initial scan, we let's go to lower resolution because we don't know what we're going to see yet. Let's go to 20 microns, about a half a hertz, so it'll scan 20 microns or half a cycle per second. So take one second to go this far, one second to go this far to complete one cycle, so a half cycle per second. Okay, before we scan, let's uh, select the channels that we want to look at. So you can see there's a, a number of channels we could look at. We can add, um, there's components we could add to the instrument to do even more channels. What I'm most, most, we're most interested in for this sample is the size of the nanoparticles that we made. So the height will help us measure size. And let's do forward and backward. Forward is one direction Y, backward is the other direction Y. And those two directions should give us the same signal if everything is tracking well. So that's a good way to check tracking. And then let's look at amplitude. The, t the amplitude is how much the tip is vibrating. When it encounters an object on the surface, cause a change in the amplitude. And it'll be abrupt. And that actually helps us see edges of, of objects. So we press the play arrow. And you can see the cantilever is moving back and forth so this is our X direction and every time it goes back and forth the cycle it moves up in Y this is the Y direction and does another scan each scan this is line by line the scan the profile for each scan and then this is the image that's being built up as we scan X forward X backward and then we move up at 1 and Y see this is Y Brightness means a high object. Darkness means a low object. In this case, we have a very flat surface. That's our glass slide. And every now and then, we have these bright spots, which in our profile look like spikes. And if everything's tracking well, the forward and the backward profiles should look similar. And it looks very similar. They're, sh they're shifted a little bit, which you might expect as you go in one direction and then turn around and go the other direction, there's going to be some uh, slapping, I guess you'd call it. Also notice that our flat surface is not level, but we can uh, fix that with the software. So over here, we can do a line fit, and let's do that here as well. So now that flattened it out pretty well, and now we can see these spikes a little clearer how they're sort of lining up, they're just shifted a little bit. And up over here we see the spikes look like dots. So what we want to do is measure the size of these bright spots, because those are objects, spherical objects. They're, they're, if they're circular spots, then that means it's a sphere, and that's probably our nanoparticle. Here in tapping amplitude we can see I, it helps me at least to see these spots. So in height, it's really hard to tell that there's spots right here. But amplitude, you can see there's a little circle outlined 
because there's a spot there, or a change in height, an object that's coming up off the surface. Over here we see a clump of objects, so there may have been some aggregation of our nanoparticles into uh, bigger clumps. Now, the challenge of doing atomic force microscopy is that you collect the data line by line. If we increase our resolution, it's going to take longer. That's why when we just initially see if we can see anything, we do a lower resolution. To actually measure the particles, you want to do a higher resolution. If you're liking this image and you think, this is what I want to include in my report, you can capture the image with the camera button here, then it will send it to this folder on the hard drive on the instrument. This computer is not connected to the internet, it, and so to get the data, these images, image files, off the computer, you'll need a flash drive.